Well, I'm here today with a man who needs no introduction. Uh, having said that, I'm going to introduce him anyway. Uh, it's my great pleasure. Captain Europe, how are you? I'm very well, thanks. I would, uh, I would even say super. <laughs> and it's good to see, Captain, that you're not above having the odd beer. Well, indeed. If, uh, if Farage can do it, then I can do it. Now, look, I'm going to cut straight to the chase with perhaps the most obvious question. Why exactly are you dressed like that? Well, the, 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 the answer to that is very prosaic and at the same time uh, a bit complex. I was at a fancy dress party for Carnival many years ago, not dressed like this, and saw various people dressed as uh, you know, Superman and Spider-Man and Batman. And I thought, hang on, why are we importing these American superheroes when we're here in the capital of Europe? So I kind of came up with the idea of a European superhero and then uh, took on the persona and the persona has kind of taken on a life of its own and it's been uh, tremendous fun. Well it's fair to say uh, but at the moment Europe is facing some of the biggest crises it has in its history uh, at least in the European Union's history and of course uh, we can't mention those crises without mentioning Greece. I mean hasn't the European Union blotted its copybook? I suppose in a sense it has at least the the political level has uh, not so much from recent events, but from decisions that were taken a few years ago uh, to allow Greece to join the single currency when clearly it wasn't ready to do so. You know, if, we, if we're honest, most of the people who took those decisions knew that it wasn't ready. And I think uh, some pretty harsh lessons have been learned about what happens when you do things for the sake of political expediency. It almost felt like it didn't become a European Union issue. It was almost more of a Eurogroup issue. Um, in, in a sense, it was a Europe group issue, and it was also uh, an issue between Greece and its creditors. Greece had borrowed irresponsibly, the creditors had lent irresponsibly, and it was left up to the, the, the politicians and, uh, and to the taxpayers in various countries to try and pick up the pieces of that uh, irresponsibility. And of course, uh, Captain, we've now moved from one crisis to another. We're on the migration crisis. Again, a real challenge for the EU? Um, it is a real challenge for, for the EU and for its member states uh, on, uh, on a number of levels. I, one of the, in, in a sense we're, we're victims of our own success. Uh, Europe is perceived as a very attractive place to come and live uh, and that is something that I think we should be proud of. Um, un unfortunately the side effect is that uh, a, a great many people want to come and live here and uh, we need to look at ways of uh, how we manage that. Captain, what about Brexit? Well, in a sense, that is a matter for the for the British people. Um, you know, we, we, I think, we, uh, I think that there, there is a bit of ambivalence in uh, in Britain about what they want. I think there's a bit of ambivalence, if we're honest, elsewhere in the European Union. Um, you know, I think there there is a, a level of exasperation, and uh, probably some people are muttering privately um, that uh, if, if the UK were to leave, then it would be a case of good riddance and uh, and let the rest of us uh, get on with it. Um, but no, I, I think you know, the, the, the United Kingdom is, is an important part of the European Union. There are an awful lot of myths um, about, you know, the, the, an awful lot of fear, uh, which, is, uh, which I think regrettable. Again, you know, we, we are in the 21st century now, not the first half of the 20th. We need to get away from the politics of fear and, uh, and the politics of xenophobia. And uh, the, if you have legitimate concerns about the EU's imperfections, which are many, uh, then the way to address those is not to, to leave, but to get very firmly stuck in and uh, put those imperfections right. Captain, tell me about the man behind the mask. Well, what do you want to know? I mean, I have a, um, I have a, a rather unexciting uh, desk job somewhere behind the scenes in um, somewhere in the European Public Service. Um, I speak six languages to varying degrees. Um, I've lived in Brussels for um, a little over ten years. Um, what else do you want to know? Well, um, do your employers know that you lead this double life? Some do, some don't. I recently, or fairly recently, moved jobs. Uh, my, my old employers certainly did. Um, I don't think my immediate boss does. Uh, the college uh, at least some members of it seem to be um, um, seem to be big fans. But I mean, on a personal level, we're talking about you leading a double life. I mean, has that ever put any strains on relationships? 
Well, not hugely. I mean, I, I prefer not to comment too much on my private life. Uh, it's, it, let's just say it has at times met uh, a certain amount of dis disapproval in certain uh, quarters, but uh, it's a, a tolerant disapproval. Tolerant disapproval. And where do you keep your wallet? Uh, in my utility belt, of course. <laughs> and I mean, finally, and I'm sorry to have to ask this, but have you ever worn the uniform in, shall we say, diplomatically private moments? Mm, not recently. Captain, thank you very much, and cheers. Cheers. <laughs>